Hello again, this is Carter. This is uh, part two of video three. And I'm going to show you some counterfeits and uh, how we determine they are counterfeits. Uh, I have a couple of counterfeits that were sent to me a while back by a fellow who bought these two Stealth 70s. Um, they were X Flex, uh, is what he ordered. And when he got them, they were uh, S Flex. So these were totally out of flex. The weight is supposed to be around 72 grams, 74. These are close to 78 grams. Uh, of course, on the uh, graphic, it says made in USA. It's hard to read, but that's what it says on there. And these were not made in USA. These are made offshore somewhere. But the graphic is pretty good. Matter of fact, that's how they really get away with it, make it look as good as they can. But this doesn't meet the spec at all. Um, this guy was taken advantage of, and he lost some money there. Some of these guys uh, will send me the products and say, keep them. And uh, I get them, and I, I hang on to them. Uh, another guy. Uh, and then Nick sent me an email. He bought some some uh, graphite shafts that were supposed to be in the uh, graphite light range, and they were told he were told they were R flexes. He said I bought what were advertised uh, as Penley graphite light R shafts. When they arrived, they were Penley graphite light power shafts. And, and that difference there is this power logo graphic we used was many years ago. It's not like the sleeve of the four rings which we have trademarked. But we stopped using this probably around 2000 or 199, 1999. So uh, he got them, thought they were ours. He said he loved the original uh, R flexes, he played them well. He says he sees no, no flex uh, de designation on them. And he says, can you tell me anything about these, please? Well, I had to tell Nick these are counterfeit. Not only are they uh, uh, not ours, they're X's. And one reason they're X's is because they built them on the wrong mandrel. That has the diameter of the butt was smaller, so to make the diameter larger for the grip, they went ahead and put more material on. That's that's a common trick that uh, counterfeiters would do. Or move it up or down the mandrel, trying to get it to be where they want it. But uh, when it comes out too small, all they need to do is add some more material, and of course it gets stiffer. So it got very stiff. It went from an R to an X. Not only that, the weight, which was supposed to be around 70 grams, is 95. So they're very heavy and they're very counterfeit. Unfortunately, uh, Nick got taken on that deal. Uh, here are some graphite lights. Uh, if he'd bought directly or uh, bought the older type, he would have got this kind of actually graphic. And they are the right weight and the right flex. So that was a problem that we have with counterfeiters. They're infringing on my trademark, actually, uh, when they do that. Uh, another uh, handful of shafts I got from a gentleman just recently, a few months ago. Uh, uh, so they spoke, uh, and he said, uh, below is my uh, receipt for four penny MSV GS85 shafts. And these are not GS85s, that was our gas uh, design. These were actually G285s. And he said that he corrected that on the invoice. And he said, I got four of them because uh, I figured they were very rare, uh, but they were dirt cheap. Now I know why. And he tells me some more stuff about it. Uh, he picked these up on a website the internet, and uh, the graphite light R's are actually, as you have G285R flex, they're actually flexes uh, at S. Uh, the butt ID is about 525 on these guys. And again, they went down on the ID, so they tried to add material, and that increased the moment of inertia MOI there, and it increasing the stiffness. Uh, these look very close to what I have, but uh, they were made on um, a different mandrel. The butt diameter was a different 80 gram weight, but these things weigh about 84. Uh, let me show you real quick when I when I tell you the diameter difference in the butt, what it is. This is a supposed to be a 535 or 530, uh, and this here's a real one. This is an actual shaft out of my stock, my old stock 535. If you take a 535, I've got a plug gauge which we use for all diameters and things, and anything we do in the machine work, you have a plug gauge set in. And this guy here will fit this 530 right in there. See that? That fits good. And that's the way it should, just barely slide in real tight. But when you get to his shaft he got made, I can't get it in at all. I can try and I can push, but it just won't go. It'll start maybe because it's got a champ on the end. But you can see there's a giant difference. And 10 thousandths mean you put it on the butt in material, you change one with inertia, you change the stiffness a great deal. So you kind of... Uh, Make the shaft totally wrong. Like I said, you try to get something that plays well for you, 
and it doesn't, and you might think, you know, it's you, but in this case it wasn't. I got a few more I'm going to show you quickly. We won't spend a lot of time on this because we can spend all day. I'm going to put these up right now and uh, start on the, uh, the private label ones, which actually are, are first came to me at the beginning because those are the first ones people noticed something was wrong with. Uh, these kind here, these guys buy one type of shaft at one at a time. When you're that kind of guy, you won't know whether the shaft's bad or not because you've never played it before. So you're totally at a loss and you're totally being taken advantage of. Uh, the private label companies, I make special shafts for them. Uh, in this case, we had these models here. And when I make special shafts for private label, I design it to their, uh, to their heads. I give them the right swing weight. We help with the swing weight, the playability. And usually the uh, flex is very tight range, sometimes half the range of my normal flex. So these guys are very specific in their design. Uh, these are made offshore, uh, and they were made uh, at the wrong flex. I believe these here were uh, actually uh, were supposed to be S flexes, and uh, they're private label. The flexes really are. So right away, these guys who build these clubs every day and use my shafts, these private label company, knew something was wrong right away. They contacted me again. Wrong butt diameter here, ID. So uh, we have a, a, a problem there. We have the wrong diameter on the grip uh, diameter, so that's that's wrong. Of course, uh, none of the three are in spec. They're all just ours. So uh, obviously they, they saw that. And you would notice that same company uh, had the same problem here. They had another model, which were ours. Uh, they got a batch of these guys again. Uh, they were the private label flex and all these guys are L, so they're L and A, matter of fact. Uh, but diameter is wrong, so they lost the stiffness of the, uh, in the butt. And uh, also, uh, none are made to spec. All 12 are out of spec. So uh, it's 100%. And uh, another group, they had, same guys had another group that made uh, this model for them, which is their, 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 their basic private label line. These are X stiff, so uh, they were X, yeah, not stiff, but extra stiff. So they are, a flex actually is uh, A, R, and S's. Out of 12 of them, uh, the uh, so one was an A, uh, five were R's, and six were S's. The closest we got to an X was a mid-range S. So uh, butt diameter, again, wrong. They tried to move it around the mandrel, I guess using one mandrel they found or something they had. I doubt that the included angle throughout the shaft is the same, so then its bendability or the actual load plane changes too. So it doesn't play at all like it should. Uh, again, in these 12 shafts, again, they actually sent me, none were in spec. I've got, I've got many others. There's so many we can't even really go into them, but to give you an idea, there's another private label group, uh, and they had uh, about 40 of them here, 20, I think, had 20 shafts in this group. Uh, let's see, yeah, so these were, uh, these were actually uh, 20, and out of the 20, I think uh, four of them were within spec, and 80% weren't, so these guys, again, were made with the wrong uh, material, wrong mandrel, uh, they ended up with a uh, uh, lower flex than they should have been, and uh, they were made offshore. Uh, says made in USA, but they were not. Uh, and again, the same company that I was dealing with, a well-known company that does their own clubs, uh, they sent me a whole batch of these back. Uh, same problem here. Um, these had, I think, uh, in this case, close to 56 shafts, I believe. Yeah, 56 in this group. Uh, 18 were out of spec, but early on, they, they got them pretty close. But otherwise, they... Uh, they were missing a bunch of these. None of these really played well or, or swung away well for them. So we got these all back as an example. Uh, another group, of course, I've got a batch here of 56 from a company. Now these 56, are they're supposed to be X's. And out of X Flex, we only had, I think we had 16 X's, 24 S's, um, three double X's. So out of 45 shafts, only 16 were any really good. Uh, that's about a third, and that's that's almost pretty good for a counterfeit guy. They got them pretty close, but uh, a lot of this happened early on, and uh, the company was in the midst of being sold at the time, and I, I was trying to buy it back. But this stuff all went offshore. I think one of the things I'm going to show you real quick too is on the uh, the butts. 
I don't know if I went through this movie before. I don't think so. But on these guys here, we got a 530 button. This is a 530 plug gauge. Fits right in. Slides in there. And you can tell that's 530. It's got a nice snug fit. On the counterfeits, it won't even start. They are, they're 520s. So they're already down. And that's why, as I mentioned, the flex was way down in the stiffness. So those kind of things you'll be able to see or measure. But I've got all the dimensions. I've got all the specs on these shafts. So I know what to look for. And sometimes I can, uh, even over the phone, tell you whether they're good or bad. So you got to be careful. The breakage is another problem when you have with counterfeits. Um, if they don't get the tip right, rolled right, or started right, you get voids. You get interlaminar voids. And you get, uh, you get actually, you get uh, interlaminar shear. And it tends to crack and, and, and damage the fibers inside. Sometimes you can't even see it until that head flies off. So very critical, be very careful. Any, any questions that I mentioned before, give me a call. I'll try to help you if I can, uh, but I cannot vouch for anything that I'm not uh, sure I made. And that's a legal problem that I have to deal with that I just gonna wanna uh, you know, go into. But uh, so uh, hopefully this gives you all the information you need. I think as we get into the next two or three videos, I'm gonna try to get into the meat of things, uh, how we set up, how we do the shafts, how we install them, what we look at as for flex, how close and how tight we do that, and, and why. So if, uh, if you got time, stop in again. We'll have video number four up, we hope, in a week or two or a couple weeks. Uh, please stop by and visit. And meanwhile, you have a, a, you know, a, a, a good game of golf and a great day. And uh, be careful out there. People will take your money. Thank you. Goodbye now.